My name is Lisa Blakeney. I'm from Bunbury, Western Australia. Uh, my name is Alan Blakeney and I'm also from Bunbury, Western Australia. I'm having an operation um, with Dr Fagenbaum on Monday and I have six tylosis on my sacral nerve on my spine. We didn't know the tail of cyst was an issue at first. It came about with um, Lisa experiencing bladder uh, symptoms as far as being weak in the bladder and it affected her work and she started to get treatment with, the, uh, with that issue and through some closed doors I guess you could say with neurosurgeons and, and urologists we, we uh, we just keep hitting our heads against the brick wall, so to speak, because they kept saying, well, we just can't help you, and here's some painkillers, and um, this, you know, basically just a pain management uh, system that you have to undertake. And I felt, well, this is just, it has to, we have to, we have to do better than this in Australia, surely. So with the help of the doctor as well as my search on the internet, I was able to find um, Dr. Feigenbaum and also Amos. The journey to get help through Dr. Feigenbaum as well as through the Amos Hospital was to, uh, well, was, <laughs> it started very slowly. I was in touch, would you believe it or not, with a Greek gentleman who was the president of the tennis club and also heavily involved in the local Rotary um, Club of Bunbury. And I just said to him, look, Alex, we've got a problem because my, my wife is, um, you know, we, we've got no way of getting treatment in Australia. So Alex took it on board. He actually had a doctor as part, who was a, a member of the Rotary Foundation as well. He wanted to find out if this, this lead, so to speak, in Dr. Feigenbaum was, was genuine and that we could not find anywhere in Australia to do this surgery. And we, no, no neurosurgeon could really do a successful treatment on Lisa. And then Alex started to make inquiry and he got us on the radio. I went on the radio program with Alex Cliff. on the next Dougie. week. Yeah, Cliff and Daggy, which is a morning program in the local <laughs> Bunbury uh, radio. And before we knew it, oh, in between that, but in between the GWN, uh, which was the local TV network and the radio network, we set up a trust account for donations. Uh, we just took it on ourselves, upon ourselves with the advice of a few friends. Look, do this because you never know, people might start to listen to your story and want to give money. And they were. After that, we had the radio program. Alex set up a, um, a charity day for Lisa. And what that involved was everyone to wear fluoro and costumes and wigs. Even Alex dressed in a, got in a dress. And, I, and they had to do they had to do dares for extra money. So when you arrived on the day, uh, I actually was dared to wear a dress. So that was quite humorous because no one knew where to look when that, when that happened. So you get paid. Yeah. So they did. It was extra money donated. So it was a good fun day, and the juniors got involved in the tennis day. Everyone was was there. It was just very gratifying, very heartwarming. Yeah. Before and after that radio program. Um, there were individual donors just and they were sending emails to us even a taxi driver with her with his wife wanted to set up a, a donation tin in their own taxi our own vet our vet veterinary yeah um, they set up a pony ride afternoon so all of these um, companies and individuals have put forward an amount all added up all these little bits and now we and now we're here today and we just can't thank them enough. We, yeah, and we just thank you to all you guys out who are watching this. We're here now and getting quite emotional actually. Very emotional. Yeah. When we contacted Amos, we found the process really, really quick. They were very polite over the phone. Um, it was actually so emotional hearing the voice of someone over there, you know, just acknowledging us, being really loving and compassionate, not even knowing us, and being very understanding, put us in contact with Debbie. Once they got back to us, they clearly told us 
what steps to take after that. Efficient, yeah. Yep. Um, we were put in touch with an Amos representative in Cyprus. And it was a nice dovetail too with Debbie because um, when Cyprus was closing for business, then you could, if you'd sort of forgotten about something, you could contact Debbie. Time. Debbie was there, especially with the radio, with the TV interview in Australia. Fantastic. We were sort of a bit anxious because we didn't want to make any mistakes with their interview for the media. So Debbie made herself available to help us with those, to how to, to, how to conduct the interview with the right words and the right information. And that was great having that help. If you didn't have that help some, from so far away, you'd be so lost. But they've guided us nearly every step of the way. We've had that guidance, that full guidance. And always that caring and compassionate voice over the phone and over Skype. If ever we needed them, they were always there. And that is the most important thing, especially when you're having an operation overseas, you need that. And you also don't need it just over the phone, you need it when you get over there as well. And this is what we've had ever since we've landed in Cyprus. We've had all that. So overall, the whole process has just been... been magnificent. Yeah. My thoughts for the surgery coming closer is basically being able to walk, that feeling of having my feet back on the floor and being able to take those steps on my own is just mind blowing for me. You know, it, it's going to be the start for me getting better and getting stronger. I know it's going to take a little bit of time, but I'm willing to go through that patience of it all and that healing process. But to know that I've got people there helping me and I'm not alone, that is excellent. That's all I could ever ask for. The experience for me in the hospital, from the moment I got out of the taxi and was met at the airport to the moment I got at the hospital and had my blood test, was magnificent. Everyone was so welcoming. Um, it was just like being at home, basically, with your family. Uh, um, everyone was magnificent at Amos. Everyone was there for me explained to me what was going to happen, how it was going to happen, what I was going to experience afterwards. Um, uh, Nick came and saw me. He was very, very knowing with what was happening and he was very easy to understand. Um, I had um, others that came to me, Sunny. I was never left alone. And that is the most important thing. When you're going to a place where you don't know and you've never been to, it is just wonderful to know that you're looked after. Surgery date for me, um, wasn't nervous in any way. As soon as we got through the doors in the hospital, everybody greeted me, which was wonderful. Um, not scared in any way. Um, as soon as I went through the doors, I cried. As soon as I seen Sunny and everybody, I just cried because I kept in contact with everybody. And I was just so excited to just be in that hospital and know that I was going to get out of that wheelchair. The day of the surgery of what happened, I remember waking up in bed in the hospital and just having the most biggest smile on my face ever that you could possibly sort of see on anyone that's been in pain for so long and know that everything was going to be all right. You had people behind you and before you knew it you would be walking and I didn't realise I would walk that quick. The, yeah, the day of the surgery for Lisa, um, I remember it was a special one because where I was, it just it ahead of my mind that Lisa was getting treated, but at the same time, my mind was off it, at this, if that can make sense. Because the it was a relaxed atmosphere, and I had the utmost confidence that Lisa was in great hands. I met the team of Amos with everyone that Lisa's just mentioned. 
and I had no fear. And I, even though it was so long away from from my home country, it, yeah, that feeling was was strong that everything was just going to be all right. Then, Very homely, wasn't it? Yeah. What the first feeling was for me after surgery was getting out of the hospital bed for the first time ever, them saying to me, come on, we're going to get you up after I had my drain out. And they said, we're going to walk. And I said, I know I'm not in pain, but I've only just had my operation. And they're like, no, you'll walk. So I got up and I walked. And being in a wheelchair and in pain for four months in a wheelchair and pain for so long, it was, it was just amazing. It was literally like, a, well, it was a miracle. It was, it was a miracle, yeah, that's how you can put it. It was a miracle, it was just so. And I remember my husband saying to me, I can't believe your face and your smile, you're walking, this is, I know I'm walking. I said, I just, I couldn't believe it. And there was pain, but not pain from what I've been having. It was just pain from the operation of just being cut, but not as much pain as I thought I would have. It was just amazing. Well, the feeling I had initially- Nearly fainted. The day that I saw her face, this is before she walked, uh, was just disbelief. The, obviously there were drugs there, you know, to help her through that pain, but she knew, I could, I could tell she was lucid enough to know that, that um, she wasn't feeling that, that um, burning. severe burning pain that she had experienced six months prior to the surgery. And to mm. see her walk and to capture that on the yeah. video, <coughs> uh, it was making me cry now. <laughs> making me a little bit emotional but I just never thought that day would come prior to finding Dr. Feigenbaum and Amos so um, yeah it was knowing that it, it the trip right then was a clincher it had been fulfilled the purpose I, of the trip. The only regret I have is not having my girls to see that happen mm. if, if my girls had seen that happen they it would have been so much overwhelming for me after seeing me being in a wheelchair and them seeing me. It would have been, meant so much more to me in that way. Because, you know, our girls are everything to us. And it was just for me to just look at Alan and say, look, you know, even though I, I, I do need help and I will need a little bit of help for a while, but. I'm, I'm walking and that's the main thing and that's special. When we got um, taken from the hospital to the hotel, the Meridian, um, it just basically blew me away <laughs> um, to know how friendly everybody was, how Amos was there all the way through everything. Never left us alone, it was brilliant. Um, left us alone of course to do our own little things but um, was with us because I needed physiotherapy so they worked with me with that. Um, they'd come and check on us, give us a phone so we felt at home so we never felt alone because being in a strange country you'd be like well who do I ring if anything goes wrong mm. and we had that phone didn't we yep. and that really helped us out because we had all these phone numbers for Mary, which she's been very dear to us, Mary and Sunny, which is, she's just, she lives up to her name, she's just so sunny basically, <laughs> with her personality, she's bubbly. And then there's Nick, and we, we, we got phone call from Nick, and they come in, they see you, and you're never alone in that way because if ever you need to ring someone, or you need a question, or you need um, some more painkillers, they're always there for you. And the other patients. And exactly, the, the other patients, you've gone through what they've gone through, so 
Of course, some have gone through worse than others because of different, many cysts from others, but everybody's in the same boat and it's nice to know that everyone can get together and discuss one another's stories with one another, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, support and one it, another. That's right, and it affects people in different ways. Hmm. Um, it's, it's a very spiritual place and everyone's just so loving from the heart, just unconditionally and you can tell that no one's fake, you know, everyone's just so genuine, they mm. really want to help you and they, they want to assist you and they want to just be there for you, don't they? Yeah, and the facilities are stunning. Oh, it just, when we got to the room, it, was, it just took, it took our breath away, the choice of the room and how they'd placed us in that, that, in that way to help the healing process was just, was magical. When you're a patient and your loved one has dealt with you being sick for so long in a wheelchair, having to get you out of a wheelchair, having to take you to the bathroom, having to put you back in the wheelchair, having to put you to bed. It's very tiring for them. Um, and being as um, long married as we have 11 years, it's been a tester. Um, there's been times where I've said to Alan, you can walk away and not be with me if you feel it's too much. But he's stuck by me, <laughs> bless his heart. And I've had such a close family knit as well. So you've got to have the family close knit to, to pull through this, um, which I've been very lucky with. I was uh, fortunate enough to do a little bit of sightseeing with one of the other patient's husbands, um, who we, we actually took a trip this week to a archaeological site, which was just incredible. The, just the feeling of being in a place that's mentioned in the Bible and also known in history as a significant uh, place where a civilization began and you know many people before us have lived. It just took my mind back to those times. And but not only that, the, the, uh, the people that you come into contact with, as Lisa's mentioned before, it doesn't matter who you, you meet, there's a smile on their face and if there's not, it doesn't take long and there's a smile. They're, they're just so obliging and uh, it, it's just, it's very picturesque, uh, island of Cyprus. Um, it has a nice blend of the new and the old, I've noticed. They've preserved a lot of the, the culture, which is just uh, wonderful. I would just like to thank everybody Friends, family, Rotary, tennis, my mum, my dad, my nana, my best friends are looking after my children now and Alan's, well both of our children, <laughs> just thank you so much. Yeah. You, you just, I know you know me as a person and Alan as a person but it's just changed me so much and just made me want to give more and more and more and when we get home we're going to give to rotary we're going to get into rotary yeah and we're going to we're going to be more than ever giving yeah. just people like alex they um they touch your heart and yeah without without their support we, we simply wouldn't be here so yeah just all our friends Everybody that got together did that fundraiser dinner, the paper, that yeah. are going to still chase us up when we get home. Um, our employers. The TV, our, our employers. employers. Mm -hmm. and, and, and added to that, strangers that we've never met. And they've just read about our story and all heard about our story in the media. Um, it just touched our heart deeply to have them um, contact us via email. Or they just went into the bank and you find out at the end of the business day that there's been deposits by people you, you don't even, you, you haven't never met. If it hadn't been for mum and dad starting it, um, they've been helping out with um, part, part of the events. charity, mm -hmm. getting together all of the things for the raffles. Mum's absolutely exhausted because she's sick at the moment because of everything happened. Um, I mean, and just can't thank my mum and dad enough. My, my parents are amazing. I just can't thank everybody enough.
We thank everybody from the bottom of our hearts yeah. that watch this. We really do. We can't thank you all enough. Thank you.